Okay, welcome back to uh, the Cube, Silicon Angle, and Wiki Bond's flagship program. We go out the advanced extract the ceiling from the noise. We are here to wrap up day two, kind of put a summary around the second day of Discover. Um, great day, we had an amazing bunch of guests on here. We had um, George Kadifa, Executive Vice President, General Manager of the Software Group, which you know, Dave Vellante predicted will be probably one of the most biggest growth drivers uh, in, in the company's future turn, not only in the turnaround, but and beyond. Obviously, I'm bullish on the software side, like how they're going after that. Um, so we're going to break all that down, all of our guests. I'm John Furrier, and join, joining me here is uh, Dave Vellante, us the co-host, the founder of Wikibon, and Jeff Kelly, big data analyst. Uh, Jeff, big data, George Kadifa, obviously basically saying, hey, you know, Vertica's uh, a diamond, a diamond in the rough. Uh, we didn't buy it for revenue. We don't buy revenue, we buy levers. We buy uh, accretive companies. Um, is Vertica delivering on that investment? I think it's absolutely delivering. They are uh, you know, growing steadily. Uh, you know, and they, they've got now. They're starting to align the HP Salesforce. Uh, having talked to some of the uh, some of the guys at Vertica, and that's that's a work in progress, but it's getting there. Uh, part of the challenge is, is is finding the right incentives for the sales uh, the Salesforce, which is you know traditionally selling hardware, uh, and where Vertica is really so efficient hardware hardware wise. There's a little bit of a conflict there, but they're working on that. Uh, but really, what I what I like I like the messaging from Kadifa. I think he understands this. The, the real value of big data. One of the real value drivers is not just uh, improving efficiencies and you know uh, finding some you know marginal improvements in, in uh, productivity and, and new revenue opportunities, but really building completely new business models on, on top of big data. And I think that's what Haven's going to allow a lot of their customers to do if they execute. Dave, what do you think? Well, so John, well, about it's, uh, day two. it's useful to you know, from my standpoint. I, it's great when you're just coming off a, a, another show and you can compare it. So we were at IBM uh, Monday and Tuesday at Edge, and essentially what IBM's trying to do is, I mean, IBM's a, a software and services company that ha, you know, has a big hardware business. Um, HP is a hardware and services company with a relatively small software business, you know, $4 billion speaking. So, and I think that IBM essentially is trying to turn hardware into a platform with, a, with an API and drive analytics for better decision making and appealing to ISVs. And I think you know, HP is really, I, I, what I heard today from Donatelli and from our guest, really much more practical. Uh, you know, we've got solutions that you can buy today, betting on OpenStack, as is IBM. So that's the, there's some real commonality there. And I think that um, you know, these two companies, IBM and HP, are really, in my mind, the enterprise leaders. Um, you know, the ones that customers look to, uh, the, the most trusted advisors. I mean, you know, yeah, Oracle, but the, you know, Oracle's not a trusted advisor. Oracle's a mistrusted, you know, advisor <laughs> in a way. Um, you know, Dell is, you know, the, the solution for small and mid-sized businesses, but really IBM and HP. That's not fair to have, say, call that an Oracle. I mean, they, they, have a, they have a lot of customers that love them. I mean, come on, no, Oracle. But not, yeah, that's true. They're, they're, on, you, need to, you need to pull that back. <laughs> I don't like pulling it back. No, it's true. <laughs> a lot of people don't trust Oracle. Um, and I don't think they look at them as the quote unquote trusted advisor. I'm not sure necessarily, by the way, trusted advisor is something that Oracle aspires to. I think Oracle is a trusted to, business partner, make money. That's uh, what customers Oracle, want. People yeah, deliver Oracle good wants products. to solve problems and make money. Now, where yeah. Oracle has problems, in yeah. my opinion, is that they gouge a little bit deep, you know, on the licensing side, and that open source is. Is an alternative now, so that's going to obviously, uh, you know, my opinion, that's my take. On it. That's what I'm saying. I, again, you know, when you say, okay, who's the trusted advisor? It's IBM and HP come up. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, again, I I don't think because Oracle's not a big consulting firm, they're not a big services company. Yeah, they're, they're pounding database, right? So that's their. No, no one puts their, their wallet on the table and, and then walks away and says, Oracle, could you watch my wallet for me? My trusted advisor. Yeah, a trusted advisor. Yeah. Like Accenture's a trusted advisor. Deloitte's a trusted advisor. PwC's a trusted advisor. And again, I put IBM and, and HP, you know, in a different light, but but definitely. For, certainly as an infrastructure company. So, so it's interesting to juxtapose those. I think you know, the Amazon effect is also very interesting. Um, you know, we talked a lot about cloud today. Uh, Sargulai, you know, you know, was very forthcoming. And I think that you know, Amazon, the Amazon effect is, is real and significant. And companies like IBM and HP have a lot to lose. Right? So you saw IBM go out and acquire SoftLayer. You saw HP you know, basically announced its public cloud these companies have to move fast in this area, uh, or else you know Amazon's going to steal a lot of their business. So, John, that's kind of my take. I don't know what you what you feel about uh, what you've seen today. Well, day two was interesting to me. One, a um, couple things. It was exciting because we had a couple um, 
exciting moments for at least me per, on a personal level. One, uh, Tom Joyce is always on the queue. You know, he comes on all the time, but first time as the SVP, uh, general manager of a division at HP, which is a big deal for HP. If people know HP, being an SVP and a general manager is a big deal. And he now has been promoted. He's been a friend of the queue. He's been on the queue for since we've been doing the queue, and he's now rose up to the ranks. So, on a personal level, that's a private victory for me, Dave. And well, for us, because watching a guy grow with the queue is really cool because right? we've had a chance to follow his career when he was, uh, I don't want to say lackey because he worked his way up. He was, you know, when he was one of us. Now he's a big dog, right? I mean, well, he's that, always pretty senior you know, executive, you know, but, yeah, but now so, he's like super senior. Yeah, so, and so by that, the way, he's on the, the cover of SiliconAngle.tv. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but that, that, the private victory, so that was cool. I, I felt proud in a way, almost uh, part of uh, Part of his success, I felt that. Chris Seeland came on. He's the vice president of marketing for Vertica. Okay, now what's interesting about Chris is this guy is one smart dude, and I, I you know, I've known him on Twitter. He was one of our first contributors on Silicon Angle when we started in 2009. When, when, when I got together with Mark and we said, hey, let's do this group blog, he was one of the analysts. There was a couple of key dudes, he was one of them, who contributed content. Um, and he didn't really know us very well, and he had, we had a great experience with him. He's smart, he's now running marketing at Vertica. So having him on the Cube was great. So that was cool. Uh, but then in general, just you know, getting the autonomy guys on was great, hearing their story. Big data is gonna be so massive, but it's not gonna be as crystal clear as we, we thought it would be three years ago, Dave. It's not, oh, Cloudera is the Hadoop company, or Wharton University is the big data company. Everyone's a big data company. Everyone's taking a different angle. And Jeff Kelly and I were discussing last night, you know, that the Hadoop distros, that dynamic really is going to change the game for our friends at Cloudera and Hortonworks, right? I mean, they better start scrambling because they need to either build out and get something differentiated or if this thing gets commoditized. Start adding it, value up the stack. Yeah, musical yeah. chairs is going to go on. You know what happens on musical chairs. When the music stops, if you're not somewhere, you're, you know, you're dead. So, you know, that's, that's a threat to them. So that's just a market force. Cloud. 100 companies, 99 seats. Roger Levy was on, and you know what? We had him on at the OpenStack Summit. He was awesome today. He talked about open source is the real deal. They've embraced it. He's got some cloud chops. He understands the cloud service provider business. Sargilai is a masterful strategy guy. He gets strategy and he's also technical. So, you know, Bethany Mayer. We had some great names, George Kadifa. These are the leaders of HP. So today was a huge day for us. These I felt executives, John, that, that HP is putting forth are, are starting to impress, right? I mean, they're really they're polished. They got some you know, deep industry background. Yeah, I mean, uh, my, you only mentioned Roger my, only, my only complaint on, on today, you know, I didn't want to say it to, uh, to, while Bethany was here in the queue, is she's, um, high integrity, smart, humble executive. I think she's got to be a little bit more aggressive and flex the muscle on OpenStack, I mean open, open flow. They were first to have open flow. I remember having the conversation with her. You've got to pump that up. And, and I think recognizing that SDN is real, whether it's real from a product standpoint, the market force for SDN is so real that they should have been pushing the, the lever on that marketing on the SDN. And I think, you know, I think they might have missed that, but they got to claw back. That's going to cost more, more dollars. So, you know, I think that's my criticism of, of the HP team only is that right now they, they could be marketing better. I mean, they got to stand tall. Now, granted, they're in a turnaround plan, set the expectations really low, and then over deliver. But, yeah, they got a good team. I agree. All right, John. So, uh, Bruins tonight. <laughs> Stanley Cup Finals, Boston Excited. Bruins against the Chicago Blackhawks, the original teams in Any the predictions? NHL. What do you think? I think the Bruins are going to dominate. You really? Yeah, yeah. You do? I yeah, think, uh, I, do. That's, I don't think they're going to dominate. Chi-Town is not going to, you know, go down quickly, but, you know, I think it's going to come down to the big bad Bruins versus the, the Chi-Town chippers. I you think, know, I think, know, I, think, I think Chicago's going to play chippy. Yeah, Boston's going to play physical. I think Chicago is a lot better defensive team than Pittsburgh was, and much more, uh, much more aligned for the playoffs. And uh, as are the Bruins. So okay, be good so, series. Hope so. So uh, this is the wrap up of day two. Um, we'll be here tomorrow for day three. This is the Cube. Silicon Angle Coupons coverage of HP Discover. Uh, always fun. Great day. See you tomorrow. <laughs>